When it comes to music theory, it's never been one of my strongest skills, and I need all the help I can get. There are a bunch of Reaper uh, music theory helper tools, and for this video, I brought on Aria to help me uh, explain them because, yeah, I need all the help I could get. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, and they have a new class with Jacob Collier, Music Fundamentals, Explore and Create Your Unique Sound. This is an excellent class on music theory fundamentals and covers a lot of ground in kind of a short time. He's such a fantastic educator. Uh, he knows this. You can tell that he's so passionate about um, creating music and creativity. He can just speak this language so fluently. And this is just one of many thousands of classes available on Skillshare. You can start your free one month trial with the link in the description. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first one, Little Chord Box. Have you seen this one before, Aria? Yeah, um, it's really cool. You told me about it. Yeah, uh, and I'm pretty new to it as well. But this mm -hmm. is the simplest one. It probably doesn't take very much explanation. Um, but you can get this one through Repack. Um, it's made by Feed the Cat. Yes, FTC Tools, yeah. Essentially, this is just a uh, little UI element that can be embedded into Reaper's MIDI editor right below the kind of cursor information where it shows which note you're on and the time position. Right below that, you're going to have a little chord box and whatever notes you have selected, it's going to show you what that chord is. Integrates really smoothly and it's, it's all very seamless because you can, you're already kind of used to looking in that position to see what note you're on and things like that. So just being able to highlight the chords, not have to run any scripts. It just shows you there. So there, in the in the past, I've seen uh, scripts where you make a selection and then you run the action and then it takes you to a website where it lists all the notes that are in there and then <laughs> and right. stuff. And which is good. It's it's not bad at all. But like it's not as seamless and it's not, yeah, fluid. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this. If you go to Key Snap. So if I go to key snap and say I'm in C natural minor, not only is it showing me the chord as it was before, it's showing me the scale degree of the chord. So it's telling me that in C minor, this um, chord is the minor four degree of the chord. And if I go over here and select these, that's my minor one. That's pretty handy as well, because you get to kind of learn about functional harmony, which I'm sure Jacob will go into a lot of detail about. Yeah. However, and this is a feature request. I don't know if you want to talk about this. In, for example, C minor, the major six chord is an A flat major. It's not a G sharp major. And they kind of sound equivalent, but they're not. Even Reaper knows that it's A flat. Okay. So that's a little FTC feature request. Get okay. that. <laughs> and harmonics in order so i guess the only tip i would have for using this is just to have this either at, uh, run as a startup action or just add it as a toolbar button so that when you start your day you should just have to start this action once and it'll be embedded into the ui um yeah just it's not an, a, an extension where it would just be on all the time you have to run it at least once so you mentioned this in the last section, and I think this is worth mentioning. There's a bunch of things built into Reaper that will help with what notes are in a key and all those sorts of things. So down on your MIDI editor, I can see that key snap is enabled. We've got the key of C natural minor enabled. And if you notice the piano roll, there's keys that are, um, well, we've got two shades of gray there and then the black keys. And basically, what this is doing is just eliminating the notes that are outside of that scale or key. And then, you know, you can't add in a note that's outside of the key um, without going into or disabling key snap to do that. This is also helpful if you want to transpose things into a different key because the transpose functions, shifting notes up and down, that's going to follow the key snap settings and you're not going to shift something just like by, it's going to shift by degrees that work in the scale rather than just straight plus one, plus two sort of thing. So take advantage of these things because they're very, very helpful. They're well thought out and they're integrated into Reaper very well. 
Yeah, and I would also add that I always personally thought, well, I know music theory, I don't need to use any of these tools. But even if you do know music theory, they can be really useful. Um, and they can make your life, first of all, faster, but also just give you things that you may not think about even with all the music theory knowledge in the world. So say if I take this little bit of melody, say I want to write like harmonies on this, right? So with the key snap, I can just hold option and I can start copying these up and then very quickly get to like all kinds of different kind of harmonies. So I just did something random. Let's see how that sounds. It's, it's a little bit, it's fifths, so it's not super fun, but let's try thirds. So even if you know all the music theory in the world, it's just so much faster to do it like this than for me to go and write out, you know, a uh, ninth harmony. That's proper Jacob Collier stuff. And then we can stack them. Jacob Collier would be like, how about a little quartal? Stuff like that. I don't know if that yeah. was useful. <laughs> <laughs> well, just dragging it because we've got the key snap on, the, those chords are going to make sense with mm -hmm. the key. Exactly. You're not going to have very dissonant uh, chords that way, which is much easier than guessing on the keyboard if you don't know music theory very well or dragging and and having to reference a chart or something like that. So use the key snap functions because it works with transpose and it works with dragging as well. Another thing that's built into Reaper that I think is kind of hidden for a lot of people, there is a notation view. So can you go ahead and press, what is it, Alt? Option 4. Um, Option 4, Alt yeah. Option 4 for the uh, PC. Oh. Yeah, go ahead and press Alt F4. So this is an automatically generated notation view for the music in that current MIDI item. Yeah, there's a bunch of options here. This is something I personally never use because music theory is, uh, it's, it's never been a strong thing for me. It just, it's in one ear and what out the other. And I barely passed in my audio engineering course, all the music theory classes. It's hard to, to keep this in my mind, but there are things you could write in here and then see how they look in the MIDI editor and vice versa. So sure. if you want to just create music using the MIDI editor, normally piano roll, and then send something to someone else that would read it on a staff, then you can do this. You can export this as a PDF or music XML and, and maybe some other formats. This is one of the views of the MIDI editor. Uh, it's worth mentioning. A few tips on this. And I mean, it's a totally valid kind of argument these days to say as a producer, as somebody who uses DAWs, even as most musicians really, you don't really need to um, know notation. If you're a guitar player, you can learn tablature, um, all sorts of things like that. Um, it is good if you, you know, use MIDI to write, say, a sax part. And then you want to give that to a sax player to, to play a real version of that. They still read notation. Um, and one thing about kind of the MIDI editor or the notation view um, that I find really helps is to go, it's to right click on it and go to view and go to notation view options. And I like to have this continuous view always, regardless of zoom level on, because with this off, let's see what happens. So we get kind of stacks like you would on a sheet of paper, but then let's say I want to zoom in to measure one. Whoop, where did it go? I don't know. Now I'm zooming out. Oh, no, that doesn't. What about measure four? Nope. It just, the zoom totally breaks and there are no dedicated zoom um, hotkeys for this view, it just uses, now I can't barely even turn this up. It just uses the same view hotkeys as your other MIDI editors. Um, so I find when I'm editing it, um, it's much more simple to have this on. And now shift, I go this way and that way. If I wanna zoom, I zoom. And another thing that you will 100% notice right away, 
So if I write something here, and with key snaps, there are no wrong answers. And if we go to the notation editor, it does something that you may not like, and that is that it beams groups of four together. Most people, when it comes to eighths, they like to group beams of two together. So you always know like on one, I play these two notes. On two, I play these two notes. Um, but what you can do is go do not beam notes, then kind of group them and beam them together. I said group them and beam them together. And as you can see, I have hotkeys for this. Um, so I just use option and B to beam them. Then you can just take these little schemes, do them once, take these schemes and just copy them over to whatever else you're doing. So you do have to kind of massage the notation to be readable by a human musician. Um, but that doesn't ch change the the sound of it. It's just the appearance on the exactly. music paper. Exactly. So if yeah. I, and, and the same thing applies to like, I can write dynamics um, on the page. So I can put like a crescendo um, and I can drag this or something. I can put like a forte here and I can come here and put like a mezzo piano. None of this is like reflected in the velocity. Um, and that's actually yeah. a good thing because sometimes what it sounds like versus what it is in notation are not the same thing. Any, anything you do here will be reflected here, but not vice versa. If you change right. the notes, the notes will change, but it's it's kind of a good thing. Yeah, velocity doesn't affect the note. Um, exactly. So this should yeah. be the velocity should be going down right now. It's not. Okay. And vice versa, if you have a low velocity item uh, in the note view, uh huh, that doesn't look any different on the uh, piano roll view. Exactly. The only thing that will change is that when you have the notes selected. This color tells you what the velocity is, like IRS. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would have even noticed that. Yeah. And but of yeah. course, you can trim them. Like, you know, a lot of things that you do to regular MIDI notes, you can still do here. Oh, it's not letting me do it right now. Uh, maybe I can turn snap off. Yeah. So I can just make all of these 16s. And again, the beaming leaves something to be um, desired because this is not how you read beams. Right. You send the score to a real musician, they'll be a little pissed, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why an orchestrator is, is a job, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on from this. Everyone's, <laughs> everyone's turned this off by now. <laughs> We've probably both done videos on Chord Gun, right? I've shot a video on Chord Gun, but didn't release it. <laughs> All right. Well, I've done a video on Chord Gun, and I know Kenny's done a video on Chord Gun and a few others. It's a popular script, but it's always worth mentioning because it's, yeah, because so many people know about it and love it. Chord God is made by PandaBot, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. who is a member of the Reaper community. I believe that's in the Reteam script, so you might already have that installed. Lovely. Love when that happens. Mm -hmm. To use it, you select a track, arm it for recording uh, with a MIDI input, and then run the script. It'll be in the regular action list, but it's also in the MIDI editor action list, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And it brings up this grid view with um, an option at the very top to change the scale. So it's currently on F major, mm -hmm. and it shows the, the main uh, notes of the scale at the very top. And then you have the different degrees of the scale, and you can change which chord you're, you're performing when you play each one. So... So Ari is going down into different chords with the root note F mm -hmm. for the first degree of the scale. And if he presses the number one on his QWERTY keyboard, that's going to trigger that F chord that he selected. So one through eight, right? Through seven, you can't go one. to the octave. So, okay. Yeah. And then zero is a note off. Yeah, zero just sends notes off. Um, 
and one thing I guess to add is that these kind of gray chords are, you know, I mean, all these chords, all these F chords have the F as the root and you can use them, but these ones, all the chord notes fall within your scale. Whereas mm -hmm. in these ones, not all of them fall within the scale. That said, you can still use them. So one kind of classic thing that people do is in a minor scale. This is F minor. On the five, this is the, this is kind of the F natural minor five chord, which is a minor chord. A lot of people go and sub that in for the major or even for the dominant seven. So then you get this kind of like super, I don't know, chopin -y sound almost like. Ooh. Right, real, real yeah. sad and like extra tense because of yeah. the existence of the leading tone because um, C7 has an E in it and E leads to F minor, real nice and nice. What I see most common as a question on my video for this, why doesn't it work? Most commonly, it's because you don't have a uh, the track record armed. Remember that. You also need to have some sort of instrument on there. So remember to add some a piano plug-in or something like that so you can hear it. This one's free. Get it. Sure. All right. So once you're into the MIDI editor, how do you get the buttons that you press in Chord Gun to get into the piano roll? I usually do this in step record mode. I can't remember if you actually need to be in step mode. You don't have to be, no. Um, so what I can do is with the numbers or just by clicking, I honestly prefer clicking, um, kind of audition the chords that I want. Yeah. Um, when I'm ready, I just hold shift and click. Uh, oh, sorry, I had some notes selected. So it's one more time. When I'm ready, when I'm ready, I just hit shift and then click. And a note is placed on my playhead and it's the size of my grid unless I change it down here. We should probably fix our, our key snap in the MIDI editor so that it matches yeah. oh, or, turn, or turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. So I hit it and it gives me a note and then the edit cursor is here. So I can now put in the next note. My edit cursor goes forward. Let's just use the same kind of chord progression we've been doing so far. And now we got a chord progression. Um, so that was a one, was uh -huh. a one, three, four, five. Is that right? Yeah, one, three, four, sus, five um, in dominant seventh form. And of course, all these chords right now are in their root position. They're not mm -hmm. inverted. Okay. But if I select them, I can use this inversion key to go up. Oh, actually, what I got to do is go, sh yeah. So I'm hitting command, shift, and then comma, or dot. And all inversions are, is they take the root note and take it all the way up. And then they take the third, take it all the way up. Take the fifth, take it all the way up. So whatever these chords are made up, it's kind of like shuffling them around. You go up and down in whatever chord degree that you're in. So I can choose my um, three flat, and then one more time. All of these are the same exact chord, but you can see that the sound is quite different. And I kind of yeah. like this one. Um, it gives me like kind of a better stepwise voice leading. Probably getting a little too technical, but okay. if okay. I wanted to just say anything about Chord Gun, it's a great way to experiment with chord voicings and creating chord progressions using a nice interface. And you don't need to have a lot of music theory knowledge to try out these different things. And you don't have to have any piano skills to try these things out. Every one of those functions can be assigned to a keyboard shortcut or a MIDI device. So you can actually have like a pad controller that has all of these things. You can make like a 64 button grid uh, with a like a launch pad. Is that yeah. the right? Yeah, a launch pad just for chord gun. That'd be kind of cool. That would be awesome. And actually, Assigning these of obviously takes longer. The mm -hmm. hotkeys here are already in place, but the annoying thing with it is as you start to use it, these hotkeys only work if this uh, window is in focus. So you just got to click somewhere around it and then I can use all sorts of hotkeys. But yeah. as you're kind of editing the rhythm on this side or whatever, 
you lose focus very often. True. Weirdly enough, in the uh, main section of your action list and not in the uh, regular MIDI editor where you would expect something like this would be more useful, is a scale finder window. You can also go to view and go to scale finder. So if I have a melody that I played, maybe I improvise it on my keyboard. I like it. I have no idea what the scale or the key is. So I don't know how to harmonize it with chords. I can select these and I can go use MIDI editor selected notes right here. And it gives me a few options. And the reason it's giving me a lot of options is because this is just four notes, right? I mean, these two are the same. So I've, I've only given it four notes. If I give it a few more notes, obviously the options are decreased. So now if we look for it, now we still get five, but then you can kind of go into these chords and you have your chord gun, you got the key snap, and you can find chords that kind of work with your melody. Uh, even if you don't know, have no idea how to find the scale for this or what the root is and stuff like that. I think that's one that I've never seen before. This is probably one that's been around for years. Uh, probably yeah. like, this could be something that's like 13 years old. I just never saw. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's default in Reaper. Yeah, it's in the view menu, but really like where would I be thinking I need something like this? Probably when I'm in the MIDI editor. Yeah. So far, we haven't talked about the circle of fifths at all, but that's such a like foundational thing in music theory that everyone uses, every songwriter uses. There is actually a script in Reaper by Kawa uh, that we can get. Kawa has his own repack repository that we'll link to where you can get this from. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is called Kawa GUI Check Circle of Fifth. Kawa's from Japan, so he does things a little bit different. That's right. Like, <laughs> you want to know what date and time it is on your circle of fifths? You got it. You got it. Let's just do like the very basics of what we're looking at right here. So if C major is our scale, our relative minor scale is A minor right below that. If D is our scale that we want to use, and we want to choose some chords from the relative minor scale, we can grab uh, anything that works with B minor. Each of these are separated by a fifth degree, and within the center, they're also separated by a fifth, right? Yeah, exactly, because obviously the relative minor key to any key, right, is a minor third away. So as this, go up, as this goes up a fifth, the A minor goes up a fifth as well, A, E, yeah. and you can even see like A, E, B, F sharp on this here. And mm -hmm. you see the same thing here, A, E, B, F sharp. So if you ever forget the relative minors, literally grab the three o'clock and spin it and put it on 12 o'clock and you get the same circle. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp. Of course, if you go back, you'll get fourths. So that's kind of nice. So C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. Right, so rather than counting the notes on the piano, which I mm -hmm. always do, <laughs> right. You can use the chart and then know that an F is is a fourth above C, right? Exactly. Move move left to go up up a fourth, move right to go up a fifth. So things are a little confusing. There's a lot of tricks to using the circle of fifths, but mm -hmm. I've seen this time and time again being used. I was taught this, immediately forgot it <laughs> after mm -hmm. I got out of school. But yeah, just everyone uses the circle of fifths and this is a pretty good implementation of the circle of fifths. It's the one that we could find today, at least. There really should be more tools for circle of fifths in Reaper. So if you're a scripter, I think there's a need for that one. Yeah, especially if you can rotate it, because when we're in F, you know, if the F is at 12 o'clock, that would be a lot more kind of visually pleasing. I'll show you and everybody one last trick. If you are in any key, and you want to know all the chords in that key, there's kind of a fun way of doing it. And it makes a lot of sense the way that happens as well. So I don't know, uh, John, if you know about kind of the concept of subdominance and dominant chords and tonic chords. You've looked yeah, into this, a, right? Yeah, a tonic chord is one that's in the scale. Mm -hmm. 
or it's relatively Wait, minor. A ton- okay, the tonic yeah. chord contains the 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 tonic, the tonic. of the scale, right? It would, exactly. If it's C, it would, it would con- it's a chord that contains the C in it. Yeah. So a dominant is the kind of most tense chord. Okay. Um, and the reason is that it contains the one note before we get to the key, right? So if I play a melody like did 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 did, you're like because you need the <laughs> did did to complete it, yeah. right? So the dominant chords create the most tension. And the subdominant chords are kind of like you can think of them as a bridge between your dominant chords and your subdominant chords. So one cool thing with the circle of fifth is if I take C as my as my key, I have C and A minor. This is my tonic and this is my secondary tonic, the relative minor. Or in A minor, C is my relative major. I have both the dominant chords right here. And again, some people argue about whether E minor is a dominant, but the point is in C major, both the E minor and the G minor contain the leading tone, which is the note B. And then my subdominants are here. My two chord is D minor and my major subdominant is my F major. And in any other key, the same thing works. So if I'm in D major, I can play with between D major and B minor. I kind of have a, I heard there was a secret chord. And then you can go, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, minor fall, major lift. All of that is right there. So all the kind of six main chords that you have are laid out in the circle. Wherever you take as the center, that's the tonic. That's the relative minor. These two are the major and minor subdominant chords. And these are the major and minor uh, dominant chords. And there's a lot of neat patterns in the circle because you stop kind of thinking of these about, you know, kind of like words you're memorizing and you just start seeing pattern. You know, you'll notice that there's a lot of patterns with keys or kind of blocks that are two away or three away or two back and also in the minor. There's a lot of patterns that you begin to notice and that's fun. You know, you'll get to learn kind of harmony how it's um how it's created cuz it's not created by going c d e f g a b c nah it's more by yeah. looking at um stuff like this okay so circle of fifths clearly like someone like aria knows it inside out and just knows it fluently and can just use it for me i'm totally lost already but <laughs> yeah here's a script that you can use as a, a helpful reminder of it So that's definitely five music theory tools that we can use within Reaper. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your help today. Of course, my pleasure. Where can we find you online? Uh, You can look up IDDQD Sound on YouTube. You can also go to IDDQDSound.com. It's under construction a little bit. But really, just go to my YouTube channel. Hopefully, there'll be a link below. And I got, I don't know. 300 videos now something like that including live streams great reaper tutorials as well hopefully you guys found this helpful thank you so much for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already follow me on facebook and twitter support the reaper blog through patreon visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials